what a memorial service last night of Kobe Bryant. I don't know if you caught any of that. I caught a little Some bit of, of that. Some of that, yeah. Just the, the emotion and the passion and uh, all the celebrities that came out and former coaches that were talking about his passion and his love of life. Yeah, he evidently impacted a lot of yeah. people. I don't know if you caught... Michael Jordan when he was uh, talking about Kobe Bryant, but these were some of the things that he said yesterday. Now he's got me. I'll have to look at another crime meme for the next. I told my wife I wasn't going to do this because I didn't want to see that for the next three or four years. That is what Kobe Bryant does to me. I'm pretty sure Vanessa and his friends all can say the same thing. He knows how to get to you in a way that affects you personally. He certainly did for a lot of people. And Michael Jordan, if you saw it, you'll know that he was just crying. The tears are coming out of his eyes, and he had to bring some levity and talk about that meme. The original meme he's talking about was when, back in 2009, he was uh, giving the Hall of Fame speech, yeah. and he was crying about Kobe Bryant well, course, then. Yeah. yeah. So that meme has been around for a while, and now he's making a joke now. Now, this one is going to be around for a long one. time, yeah. you know? <laughs> what a life well lived, you know? Yeah, it's tough for a man to cry, in public especially. Yeah. And I saw uh, uh, Shaq, who's a very large man. Right. He was just crying like a baby when I saw him uh, talk about him before. So. And that says a lot just for Kobe. Mm -hmm. It really does. I expect everybody to cry when they talk about me, okay? I do, and you're still alive. Oh, okay. <laughs> Daily. <laughs> yeah. After the show. <laughs> well, let's talk about a life <laughs> well lived today on His Morning Crew. One that you could celebrate. So, whose life well lived are you celebrating in your own personal life today? That you know that Jesus is going to look at them and say, well done. What a memorial service yesterday, huh? Uh, it was emotional. I mean, there were laughs, there were tears. The, it, it just encompassed the entire, really, message they wanted to get out about Kobe's life in general. How well-lived right. it was. And you start thinking about other people and their well-lived lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally missed it, of course, as I usually miss things. But, uh, you know, he wasn't a perfect man like like any of us. Sure. But, man, he, he definitely impacted a lot of lives. Right. You probably even know of people like that in your own personal life that have impacted you. And so let's celebrate lives well lived today at 800-447-7234. So we used to go to um, church with a woman named Karen. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter what she was going through, you know, uh, with her children, with her family, with her health. She was always encouraging everybody else. And it'd be like, wait a minute, you're going through this and you're helping me. And she lived every day to the best of her ability and to be just like Christ. What was her name? Karen. Karen. Yeah. A life well lived. Yeah. What about you? A life well lived at 800-447-7234. Rudy, you're on his radio. We lost a very big, dear friend of ours, Christian Thompson, a little over three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And he had got to a point, his motto was, you don't know that God is all you need until God is all you have. He's been to the bottom, he's been to the top. He was six foot four, roughly 320 pounds, nothing but a huge man statue, and in, in God. I mean, God had shown him true love, and he lived a life of service and gratitude, and he will be missed. He certainly impacted your life. Oh, yes. His prayer was, God, kill me at whatever cost so that I don't let lead someone else astray. That was the end of last year and went to be with the Lord on the 7th. He knew. I'm at peace. I'm going home. What a life well lived. Yeah, Janet talking about her daddy who passed away December 29th. He was 92 years old. He was a great man, which of course she knew that, but it was good to hear other people talk about how great he was at the service. So it's always good to hear other people say what you already know. Yeah, right? Sharon's along with us as well on his radio. What's your story, Sharon? I'm going to celebrate my father-in-law, George. He just passed away last week. He, he was been 89 yesterday, and he was married to his wife for 62 years. And the last words he said was, he said, I love you, and he said, I love you too. And they, she took care of him 24-7, and they loved each other and honored each other. Just the sweet testimony of what marriage should be. And um, of course, emotions still raw. It's hard to think about. But we know he's in heaven and he's healed. 
so we're thankful for that. A life well lived. And you're about to get, if I wore mascara, it'd be running right now. Mine is. <laughs> it is, quite Mine seriously. Too. Breaking you up listening, but it's, it's such a good life that we're hearing about. We want to hear your stories as well. Tasha talks about Bishop Frank and Pastor Jonelle Summerfield. Amazing leaders in the community. They showed uh, what marriage is really supposed to be and just uh, had an effect on so many lives. They both passed away right around the same time. Uh huh. But uh, they are still living within people and their memories mm-hmm. and thoughts about them. Sounds like a great love story, too. Yeah. You know? 800 447 7234. Hey, Becky, you're on his radio. My sister. Uh, passed away last year. She was the oldest of girl of nine, and she was just, you looked at her and you just saw grace. She was, she helped us in so many ways. She would sit us down on our knees and pray over us every night before we went to bed. She walked us to school. She, she worked in the summertime to try to buy her clothes, to have, you know, some decent clothes to wear. She ended up spending it all on us, on our clothes. She was just a the best. And she worked and it sailed. The first person in her department plant she worked in, first female to ever go. She sounds like a little mama. No doubt. When I lost my sister, I felt like I lost my mama yeah. all over again. But she did it with grace. And, and one last thing, her devotional, we all had the same sisters had the same devotional that we read every morning at the same time. Mm-hmm. Still connected us through that. And I got her devotional and Everything that she wrote and that she felt, even during her anguish and her pain with cancer, she never ended it without telling Jesus how much she loved him and thanked him. Look at that. What a great big sister. Like, I'm over here crying. Like, it's, that's so sweet. I know, little mama. You nailed that. Right? Over (laughs) eight other little ones. Wow. Sarah's along with us on his radio. Who are you celebrating, Sarah? It's a gentleman I knew, known all my life. He um, was in the church I grew up with. His name is Louis Bobby. Um, he just passed away uh, a couple weeks ago. He was 103 years old. Wow. He would have been 100, I, I know, and he would have been 104 in May. But he um, served in the war. He, um, you know, he, um, a, a angel, he, he, was, he would tell the story of he fell overboard. He was in the Navy. And that he seen this man with a brown suit reach over and put him back on the boat, and then he didn't see him anymore. And he said that was, you know, God looking out for him. And he was just, he was just so faithful to church and to his family. And um, he had to go into the, you know, national health care um, nursing facility. And, but he would lead a Bible study over there for years. He just recently, I think, right before, you know, before he died, he he had to stop. But he had a Bible study over there, and. Anytime I would go see him, I didn't get to go a lot, but um, I'd go to cheer him up, and he would cheer me up. I would <laughs> be crying. And he would pray. Anytime I knew it was something I needed, a prayer warrior, I'd make sure I got in touch with him through him or his daughter to pray. And he would, and he he was just such a wonderful man. And, you know, heaven, heaven has gained just the, I, I could just see all the people, you know, all the years I grew up in the church, all the ones that passed on, and his beautiful wife all welcome, you know, him. And I just wanted to give, give a shout out to him because he was just so wonderful and I just loved him so much. I love that, Sarah. A shout out to Lewis today. <laughs> Lewis is up there just having the time of his life. You know, it? the potty has begun. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's along with us. What about you, Paul? You know, we had a little lady at church. Only thing I ever knew it was was Sister Hester, and she's probably been gone for 20-plus years. She would, If you needed somebody to pray for you, it was her. 12 o'clock, she turned the news on. The minute went off, she turned it off, and she prayed the whole day till the 6 o'clock news come on. She turned it back on, watched the 6 o'clock news, and the rest of the time after it went off, she'd be praying for people in church. And I never heard that woman say a crossword about anybody or raise her voice at all for anything. you got to love people like that mm. who never have a bad thing to say about anybody. And I call that kind of person a prayer warrior. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, for who sure. watches the news in the morning and then prays and then watches the news at night. Yeah, <laughs> all day a, long. All day long. <laughs> it's amazing. 800-447-7234. Yeah, the news will give you a prayer life. Yeah. Allison is talking about her mom, Juanita. She said that will be that person, a life well lived. She's always took care of everybody else before herself. She always took us to church. She loved Jesus, but she died 24 years ago of pancreatic Mm. cancer when I was just 12. Wow. 
Goodness gracious. Yeah. And in 12 years, she made that kind of impact on her daughter. Rachel also um, texted in, and she's talking about her grandparents. Said they passed on two years ago. They were in a car accident, but they were so faithful to the Lord that anytime you needed something, man, they just showed up. They were there. They were amazing people, and she's thankful for all the memories that she has of them. That's few and far between people like that, yeah. like her, her grandparents. Mm-hmm. But what about you at 800-447-7234? Hi, Diana. I want to mention Sudie Love. Uh, she uh, taught at, I think it was Columbia high school for decades and coach and when she retired she did mission work um would go overseas and take things to children and spend time with children uh columbia knows her as the hat lady for the game cop she would go to all the ball games for softball baseball basketball boys and girls and football she would she made hats uh and every year she'd have a new hat she'd have a character on the front and whoever the star team player was she'd have their number on the front of that hat so all the teams knew her. The coaches knew her. She would go to the coaches' uh, luncheon every year. She would travel to the um, tournaments overseas with the team to Hawaii, wherever they went. Um, and when on her deathbed, Don Staley came to the hospital. Oh wow! To honor her. Anytime she would see uh, a camera crew, WIS or anybody, she'd run to them so she could talk about the game cop. <laughs> You'd see articles in the paper about her. Yeah, I love that. The official spokesperson <laughs> for the Gamecocks. Wouldn't you love to be that type of person? Absolutely. Rem- I can't make the hat, but yeah. No, Well, I mean, Hobby Lobby. That's all you got to do. They'll help you. <laughs> I'm sure they will. <laughs> Come on, Rob. Be a fan, will you? I'm sorry. I'd try. <laughs> okay, we'll get you a hat. <laughs> if you would, please. Make it just like that, if you will. <laughs> We're hearing from Kelly at 800-447-7234. You're on his radio, Kelly. Um, I want to give a shout out to my grandparents and the ones that have already passed on, how much influence they made on my life, you know, directing me to Christ and continuing to support me in prayer and uh, just loved on me my entire life. You know, and growing up, I just remember them, you know, opening the Bible and just sharing the source of Jesus with me and just um, enriching my life and, and making me a changed person by their story and just pouring their life into me. And I just, you know, that they changed my life and made a huge difference. And I'm just so thankful that Jesus placed him in my life and made that different. And who are your grandparents? Bob, Lou, um, Louise, and Dink. What's the story behind the name? Um, that's a shortened name. Uh, he, his real name is Donald. So where did Bink uh, come from, though? Because <laughs> I love that. They just they used to call him Dinky. That's what <laughs> they used to call him. And so he always was named. They just called him Dink, and that was his name. And Everybody in the community um, knew him by Dink. That's awesome. Hey, Bink. <laughs> I love great nicknames like Isn't that. that. Cool. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna try this on someone that you know very well. And I think we'll call him. You know how Jesus named Simon Peter? Sure. Oh, this is Jim. I feel yeah. something coming. I know, so, I'm waiting. So let's try. So let's just call Jim Binky. Hey Binky. Binky. What's up, Binky? Yo, Binky. It's like a pacifier, isn't it? <laughs> you know that I was thinking that that's what we called my uh, my kids pacifier binky because you pacify our lives. <gasps> oh, wow. yeah. Okay. That's a stretch, I'm sorry. Yeah. Reflect back to last night at that memorial of Kobe Bryant. Right. Uh, and of course we've been talking about Michael Jordan and how he spoke about Kobe last night Shaquille O'Neal also had some remarks but Kobe's wife Vanessa talked about him being an MVP of being a girl dad. It was amazing. Kobe was the MVP of girl dads or MVD. He never left the toilet seat up. He always told the girls how beautiful and smart they are. He taught them how to be brave and how to keep pushing forward when things get tough. Isn't that amazing? Just, you know, the the emotion in her voice and thinking about uh, what a great dad Kobe was. It makes me think of my own dad. Mm -hmm. He was a girl dad. And the things that he did for us and, you know, and introducing us to the love of Jesus Christ. Of course, the number one thing that he did. uh, And I miss him every day. But wow, what a testament. What were some of the things that made him a girl dad? Yeah, he he just took time to sit down and really talk to me about what I should expect out of a husband. Uh-huh. And I think I think that's huge. You know, not only in what he told me, but how he treated my mom. Mm. Because that I think is where you learn. You see that he held the door, he opened the car door, he took care of her and he put her needs before his the way 
you know, Jesus puts us um, before his own. Good it, night. I got a daughter. I'm failing in every one of those no, areas that she's no, talking you are about. Not. Oh, my word. Yeah. That is so cool. So being a, a girl dad, do you know somebody that's like that, that, that has those qualities and just goes above and beyond? Jim. Oh, yeah, that's true. But, Rob, remember, you you had them, I mean, you let them put uh, fingernail polish on you. And, yeah. I did, yeah. And, or unless you asked them to. No, that was to not an ask. <laughs> it's like, Amanda, please, would you put some fingernail sure. polish on me? No, never. But it was the American girl, the Barbie, and all that yeah. stuff. I didn't have these tough conversations like... Liz's dad. Oh, my word. He's like a superstar. <laughs> he was amazing. He did get on the swing set with us, and he would swing and not just push us, not just stand behind, but actually get on the swing and just act like a, a you know, just goofy guy. So cool. Yeah. He was great. <laughs> I, I I don't remember getting on the swing. Yeah, okay. okay, I did. Of course you did. We actually have a large one in our front yard hanging like from way up in the tree. So yeah. it's a long swing. And you are on that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I do when I leave here. <laughs> so leave here, do that, get video. Yeah, yeah. please. Oh, okay. <laughs> Someone get a phone out yeah. and tape this guy. <laughs> so let's talk about the great girl dads yeah. that are in life. Maybe yours. Hi, Holly. You're talking about your dad, Jerry. He was the quintessential band dad um, that was there for everything. But the thing that I remember the most, um, when I was 19, I found out I was pregnant. And it was, um, you know, not a great situation. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I wasn't I was scared. Like, I didn't think that my parents were going to freak out and, and do anything mean. I just was so sad that I disappointed them, and I didn't want to tell him and we we were out to dinner and I told him that I thought I might be pregnant and he said I love you and I just I started bawling and I said I was just so scared to tell you and he said anything else there is to say we've got plenty of time to say it and all you need to know is that we love you and, and we're going to get through this and I've just never forgotten that and I've um I've shared my story before and I remember this guy coming up to me and he said I'm so terrified of that conversation and I don't know what I would say and I you know how did he <laughs> know to do that and I said you know I don't know I said but just pray and and be, be ready for whatever it is that your daughter might tell you, and you never get a chance to go back and say that first thing over again. And um, just, I think, being prepared and asking God to guide you through the, the very worst thing you could hear and being ready for that, my dad was, was, a, was a master at that. <laughs> well, it sure is. I mean, to be ready like that, I don't know how I would have reacted. No, I think he had to have put thought into it. You would think, mm -hmm. uh, as along with that prayer, to just say, you know, Holy Spirit, give me the words. I'm not going to know how to react in that. Boy, and he did yeah. so well. Thank you for celebrating your dad with us, Holly. Yeah, Michael sent in a picture of he and his girls. He says, I have two beautiful daughters, Linda and Michelle. They are my entire world. Linda's an honor roll student, and Michelle is a future worship leader. Oh, for real? Yeah. And I love that. He's being a real girl dad right there, just bragging on those ladies. See, that's the yeah. way it's done. Uh-huh. 800-447-7234. So Beth is letting us know about her dad, Billy. Tell us about him, uh, Beth. I have a girl dad and a girl pappy. He... Dad always instilled in us, you know, working hard, saying we are overcoming obstacles. But the best part of having a girl dad is, you know, dads have to teach baseball and coach baseball. So not only did he coach baseball and me and my sister ended up having 13 or 14 brothers over the summer, but then he also took on the part of coaching our teams in softball. And now with him being a pappy, he has now taken on the every now and then pageant happy roll and every now and then pageant uh, pageant swim happy roll <laughs> so what does he do at the pageants does he help with the dress or does he just make sure everybody's calm or how does he do that he just makes sure he just makes sure he's there yeah like his granddaughter like he's the apple of her eye. so he makes sure he's there when she makes date he makes sure she he's there you know he i can't tell you how many golf saturdays he's missed so that he could be there just to watch her swim. What a great dad and pappy. I love that pappy. That's the coolest name. I love that. If, I, if I'm a grandpa one day, it might be pappy. Are we going to start calling you pappy now? No. Pappy no. and Binky. Pappy and Binky. <laughs> pappy Dempsey. Pappy. 
<laughs> Dempsey. I love them. Now I feel like I apologizing that. to my girl. I didn't do a lot of the stuff I'm hearing. Yes, you did. You, but oh, man. Every, every girl dad oh, is unique and does different things that their girl will always Boy, remember. I was unique. I sat on the couch. Oh, be happy, <laughs> Pappy. <laughs> you were a good snuggle buddy. Uh, I hope for your so. girls. There you I go. I hope so. But we have gotten some texts in, and uh, one dad was talking about he has six girls under 13, Ooh. and he says, maybe they don't hate me. The dude's a superstar. I can't even imagine. Wow. Thir- six girls. And then Oof. add the wife in. You got seven now, mm-hmm. so wow. Yep. Superstar. <laughs> Superstar stat. We're speechless. 800 447 7234. Kimber says, My dad raised six girls with only what? one bathroom. Whoa. <laughs> he has never seen the inside of that room. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Kimber, did we just hear from your dad? <laughs> Maybe. Didn't he, didn't he say six girls? Yes. And but they're Kimber under 13. Said, okay. So maybe. Mm hmm. Would you say, Jim, he's still holding it? Yeah. <laughs> Jim! <laughs> well, poor guy. Yeah, he's never been in the bathroom. Okay. Okay, there's... Never mind. Okay, 800-447-7234. Megan, you want to tell us about your dad, Anthony? Um, my dad is the perfect example of God's unconditional love. When I was growing up with my sister, uh, he coached us through everything, and he was so patient and such a calm presence in our family. And we have this little thing he and I do where we never, well, whenever we end a conversation, I always say, I love you. And he always says, I love you more. And that little affirmative phrase from him just lets me know that he will always be right there for me and he's my best friend. You know, his love for us shows through with the kids that he teaches and he's the MVD as Vanessa Bryant said. 